So glad you're here and well. You want to just start from the beginning and from your perspective, tell us what happened? I was just actually in the parking lot working on an accident report. I'm an accident investigator and I'm assigned to the traffic unit. I was working on the accident report and I heard the shots. I knew that they were close and I immediately looked up to see where they were coming from because they were too close to me. Um, as I looked up, I could see all the patients from the Walmart running out. You know, they were startled. And I knew then something was really, really wrong. I started going towards the Walmart, and just as I started going towards the Walmart, I saw the uh, arrestee coming out, and he was shooting, you know, and, and I knew then this is really bad. And so I just did naturally what I'm trained to do. I just respond. And, that, and that's all the. I had a couple of people wave me down and say, he's over there, he's over there, because they could see him going through the cars. And I just tracked him through the cars and gave him verbal commands. And just as he complied, the two bystanders that were there, they got him. They tackled him for me so that I could get him handcuffed because he wasn't going to go down without a fight. He was a slightly larger gentleman than I am. So, but I just, I just did my job. <laughs> wow. Most officers can go their entire careers and not face something like that. Did you? And you know, I know you're trained for it, but are you? What, what's going through your mind at that point? I have managed to go 10 years without being in an incident like that. And when it happened, you don't think about that. The department has spent hours in training, training us to be responsive to situations like that. We go through reality-based training. And some of those scenarios are just like that. And my training just kicked in. I didn't think about anything else. I didn't have time to think about anything else. I saw the citizens running. I saw kids. I heard shots. And I just reacted to what I say is natural when you're in the profession of the citizens, um, what did you say about them and their efforts? Because that's pretty heroic. Some it people was, might just stand by. Right. The, the two gentlemen that assisted me, I think his name is Mr. Garza, I shook his hand three or four different times, just kept telling him thank you because his size alone just made the difference in him keeping the, the suspect on the ground because he wasn't trying to easily be handcuffed. And I appreciate them more than anything because they made it a lot easier. It could have been so much worse. Without them, I think it would have been so much worse. Now, just on the outside looking in, this would probably wouldn't have been controversial. This suspect was armed. Yes, you could have shot him. Why didn't you? In all honesty, um, like I said, training kicked in and you, you learn that you have to have the opportunity. You ha it has to present itself. You have to, if the threat is there, then do it. He, he responded to verbal commands. And at the point he responded to verbal commands, then the, the aggression level had dropped. There was no point. Chief Brown has taken some criticism for policies de designed to de-escalate situations to reduce the number of officer-involved shootings. Would you say some of that shift in perspective it is half what's happening there or you just didn't have time to think about it. I didn't have time to think about it. I just responded to the situ I reacted to the to the situation. If the situation presented itself and according to policy it was acceptable, then you know, maybe so, but I'm not sure how it would have played out. I'm just glad that it played out the way that it did. No one was hurt. You didn't fear for your life at that point. You knew because he was complying, so there was no point in going to the next level. Correct. We have asked officers in theory as the nation and just was coming unglued with a lot of bad officer involved shootings. We've asked officers, you know, is that on your mind when you confront a suspect, the controversy, the risk to yourself and your career if you make a bad shoot? Is that on your mind at that time? And we've only had those discussions in theory, but that was a situation that was in front of you. Was any of that, the controversy, Ferguson, was any of that on your mind? No, ma'am. What was on my mind were the citizens of Dallas and their safety at that time. I, the rest of that had no bearing on the decisions that I made. Yeah. So, now are you, are you a mom? Or are you? No, ma'am. Oh, okay. I was I just wondering was, how, what your family thought when well, they saw what you did. Did well, they, they fear when you got there? I am, I am not married. I don't have any children. But I have a family, and they all stem from police officers and teachers. So my mother, who is a retired Dallas sheriff's officer, she, she <laughs> the conversation was interesting. She, <laughs> she was not, I'm the baby. So she was, you know, a natural mother's reaction. But they... They were proud of me, but at the same time, they understood that's just my demeanor. So I was going to do it if I had to, whether they liked it or not. But she's ready for you to be a librarian. <laughs> yeah, she would much rather me do that. Yes. How did you get into law enforcement? Because of your family? Because of my mother, yes. My mother was with the Dallas Sheriff's Office for 30 years before she retired, and I admire her greatly. And she had a lot of friends with the Dallas Police Department, so I was um, 
accustomed to meeting the Dallas police officers growing up, and I knew going into college that I wanted to be a police officer. That was why I went to school, nothing more, nothing less. Were you surprised that those two citizens reacted, that they were, that they had your back? The, yeah, slightly, because it was so dynamic. The, the man was shooting, and they didn't care that he was shooting. It's what I'm trained to do, and they decided that they were going to protect their family and everybody else just as normal citizens, and that's what I appreciated. They didn't hesitate. They were in there. You, I would have thought that they were former police the way they were in there. They, they didn't hesitate at all. Did it ever come up, or do you know if they were CHL holders? Or? I don't know. I didn't ask. Um, I was just happy they were there. <laughs> <laughs> at what point did it dawn on you, oh my goodness, what did, what did I just do? When did the adrenaline finally start to I was sitting here at headquarters um, completing paperwork, and then it just kind of all settled in, and I was like, oh my. <laughs> One more question? Crazy. This isn't a question, but before I forget, will you please say and spell your name for the people back at the station? Cassie Dotsie, C-A-S-S-I-E, Dotsie, D-O-T-S-Y.